in the process of making the Indiana Jones films, uh, I kept thinking about what was Indiana Jones like as a young man, because Harrison would ask me, Steve would ask me, you know, everybody was sort of curious about, about how this adventurer grew up. And in the process, I came up with this idea of him seeing the world uh, through the eyes of a soldier and a secret agent and having various other adventures of hunting for treasure. It's a diamond. Well, I always try to cast in my films the best actor that seems to fit the character best. I think the qualities that Sean Patrick Flannery had is that he, he seemed very young and youthful and enthusiastic uh, and um, with a little hint of uh, naivete and innocence that I thought would be appropriate for Indiana Jones at that age. I went on an audition and I uh, read for the part for the casting director. I finally got to meet George Lucas, uh, Rick McCallum, the producer. We did a screen test, never done a screen test in my life, which uh, involved full makeup, full wardrobe, and we shot six scenes. Barely a week in the jungle, and already we're leaving our dead behind. How much more painful that their eyes are still alive to accuse us. I've heard it said here that we have less to fear from the bullets of our enemies than from the diseases and parasites with which God has afflicted this land. And then three weeks later, I found out that I actually got the part, and I was on a jet plane to London. Didn't come back for six years. I wanted to have a very European flavor to it, so we hired some of the best European directors, some of the best uh, actors, Max von Sydow, Vanessa Redgrave, a whole host of very, very talented people. Who... The cast was always changing. I was really the only recurring character besides Remy played by an actor named Ronnie Couture. We must vote, we will be friends forever. Friends forever. Where we would film, whatever the location was, we'd use some of the best talent from that region. Um, it, was, it was one of the best experiences in my life. Like my first girlfriend was Elizabeth Hurley. One of my girlfriends was Anne Hesch. Another girlfriend of mine was Catherine Zeta-Jones. I'd never worked with people of that caliber before. You are so beautiful. I know. This is not what we should be doing. No. It's not professional. No, it's, it's not. Mm. Delicious. When we were shooting the Albert Schweitzer story, we were right on the edge of uh, the Kenyan border with uh, Somalia when the Americans invaded there. It was at the intersection of the Tana River and the Indian Ocean. We were at coordinates. Um, and there's no city there. We took a Twin Otter 18-man aircraft about an hour and a half out of Nairobi, did a low-altitude pass to get the gazelles off this strip of land that they wanted to land on, got in canoes, and went to the Indian Ocean for about another two hours. Lived in tents for two months. I mean, if that's not the way to shoot an Indiana Jones episode, I don't know what it is. While some of these Indiana Jones films are fun and comedies and some of them are adventures, some of them are, are very grim. The war years are a very valid recreation of what was actually going on uh, with no man's land and trench warfare. It was horrific. A whistle would blow, thousands of guys would go over the trench and charge machine guns. I think it's a very important film for people to see in terms of understanding uh, what it was like to fight in World War I. You know, in preparation for the role, um, Vic Armstrong, one of the most prominent stuntmen in, in the business, he taught me everything from, uh, you know, a lasso, uh, the whip, how to mount a horse when it's in mid-stride, to uh, one of the scariest things that I've done, which is, is probably involves the least of my ability, is hanging from the ninth floor in a spiral marble staircase in Prague, Czechoslovakia, by my fingertips. And I have a harness on, but the cable, the stunt guys are saying, oh, no, it's test weighted at 4,000 pounds. Well, it's the size of, you know, a fishing wire. But hang on by my fingertips and just take it for granted that this cable can support my weight. That is unnerving. It was a very exciting time, and it was very exciting to produce because we were able to shoot it on location in the real places where these events took place. We wanted all of the locations to be real. If you see, you know, Egypt, 
1917, we went to Egypt. We didn't shoot it on a Hollywood back lot. If you see Russia, we filmed it in Russia. I was able to give it a very large, epic look uh, using the new digital technology that we were experimenting with to create large crowd scenes that was the forerunner of what I was uh, ended up using for the, the new Star Wars film. Obviously, Indiana Jones is a fictitious character, but I wanted to make the other characters uh, in the piece as accurate as possible to give you a real uh, intimate picture of what some of these very famous historical figures were like. I would give about an inch thick stack of research material, you know, telling me about the real characters involved and what their life was really like. I mean, there are so many people who are pivotal to the way we think now in the last part of the 20th century who uh, existed uh, at the last part of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. It was uh, a real joy to be able to work with all these important figures and be able to touch upon them uh, with Indiana Jones's life. Hey, Ernie Hemingway from Chicago. Indiana Jones. Yeah. Most people call me Andy. Andy. Ernie. Thanks. I am a great lover of history, and I think it's very important for young people to understand the humanities, of which history is a, a major part. I think if young people see that, that people who have accomplished a lot are not that much different from the way they are, it, it gives them a little bit more freedom to, to think outside the box and to think that they can do great things. I know archaeology is not treasure hunting. I learned a lot about the way people live and things that they hold sacred. There are all kinds of ways of life in this world. One is not right, one is not wrong. Understanding others, we can accept them, and through acceptance comes <laughs> a peaceful world. Yeah. Good night, Indy. Good night.